They are spread across all corners of the state, a testament to the rich military history of Rhode Island. And you don't have to travel very far to find one of the 18 historic armories, built in the 1800s and early 1900s. But it is the Westerly Armory, which went up more than a century ago in a largely residential neighborhood, that has been the focus of Roberta Mudge Humble, who has spent the better part of three decades renovating and preserving the iconic building near downtown. As a kid, I was always here. My father remembers, he was born in 1912. He remembers coming here for dances. People met their husbands and wives here at the dances. You might say Humble, a retired CCRI professor, has a thing for armories. 20 years ago, she wrote a book detailing each of the state's armories. And during an interview last month, rattled off details about their history and architecture. It is the Westerly Armory, though, where you will find her on most Mondays and Thursdays, talking about the rich past of a building that was constructed in 1901, after its wooden predecessor a few blocks over burned down two years earlier. She calls it the People's Museum, because Humble wants visitors to see it for more than its military history. We've been trying to work out our image as being as community as military. We love them both. When you're outside, it looks so fierce. I mean, you know, it, and it's meant to because it's an armory um, that uh, uh, I, I would like people to uh, visit more and not, not be afraid to come in. And I think they'll enjoy the tour. It's very bright and cheery in here once you're in here. The most striking feature, she says, is the 6,000 square foot drill hall, which before the pandemic was used used for an average two dozen plus events a year. Humble said Ella Fitzgerald once sang here and Rocky Marciano boxed on this floor. I like seeing it because I like seeing people use it, number one, but also they, they, they well, there's no other space like this in this area. It's the largest space of its kind in the area, and so they really enjoy it. Among Rhode Island's armories, Westerly is considered medium-sized. It is one of five designed by architect William Walker. The best known is the massive Providence Armory, known by most Rhode Islanders as the Cranston Street Armory. But Walker also designed the armories in Pawtucket and Woonsocket, the Warwick-Kentish Artillery Armory near City Hall, and the Armory of Mounted Commands on North Main Street, currently home to the Rhode Island National Guard. The Guard was housed in Westerly when Humble formed a nonprofit in 1992 to give the building some love. But the structure she knew as a child had changed dramatically. I came down and I was rather horrified by the condition of the building. I, I thought, wow. So I put my hand on the piece of granite and I said, I will restore you. It was very hard to raise any funds because the state owned it. And people would say, well, the state should restore it. And that was true, but the state wasn't gonna give any money to these, the old armories. The guard eventually moved out in 1996 and the state sold the building to the town of Westerly for $1. Visitors will find a treasure trove of military and community memorabilia. A lot of it donated, spread out across multiple floors. Almost every day we're here, somebody comes in with something, these mementos. Um, it can be anything from old newspapers or newspaper articles to artifacts of, of different sorts. And the Armory is home to the Westerly Band, the country's oldest active community band, which rents out a room on the second floor and has performances in the drill hall. The Armory hosted the town's 350th anniversary in 2019, as it did the 300th half a century earlier. On display, the gown worn by a young Roberta Mudge in 1969. In January, before the pandemic shut down much of the state, Humble hosted the latest class of the group, Leadership Rhode Island. She kicked off the day with a variation of a talk she has given dozens of times over the past 15 years, highlighting the best, first, and unique aspects of Rhode Island's 39 cities and towns. It was the inspiration for a book she wrote in 2006 titled A Right to Crow. It raised $50,000, which she has funneled back into the armory. 
Since then, Humble has created a popular series of Rhode Island-centric games and books highlighting both the distinctive and quirky qualities of the state. There is a standing display in the First Floor Museum for visitors to look at and purchase, with proceeds going to help the armory. I like that people are pleased with the state, that they smile, that I make them happy with the knowledge that they have a great state. And it comes full circle with the armories, a reminder of Rhode Island's past and present for those who come here. Armories are wonderful. Uh, you, you have no idea until you've been in them uh, what they contain and what value they have to not only our history, but uh, to today. These are the largest monuments that we have that, that represent sacrifices made for our freedom in America. In Westerly, Jim Hummel for the Rhode Island Spotlight.